Hey guys, um, today we're going to be looking at a 386 machine. Now, I did some videos in the past about uh, you know 46 and pushing the 46 and um, you know using various chips to get you know the highest amount of performance out of a 486 motherboard. So that either would be using like an AMD 5x86 at 133 megahertz, um, a Cyrix uh, 5x86, or even a Pentium Overdrive chip um, to really you know get a lot of performance out of a 486 class board. Um, but the other thing is you can kind of do that as well with a uh, 386 and that's what I kind of want to look at today and this is the kind of like the test machine I'll be using. Um, now what's in this this guy here is just you know a, a AMD 38640 so it's a 386 running at 40 megahertz kind of a famous uh, famous 386 chip the fastest 386 chip produced uh, but they made these things. Uh, well, let me get this out. Now this is a Cyrex chip, and this is, if I can get it to focus, this is a uh, CX46 DLC, and this is also a 40 megahertz chip. Now, basically what these were were upgrade chips, and you could put this into a 386 motherboard, and it would turn it into a 486. I mean, not it wouldn't physically turn your motherboard, but you'd have pretty much have a 486-ish processor in a 386 motherboard. Now. I believe Cyrix claimed that clock for clock, it was just as fast or as powerful as a true 486. That's not true. Um, it's just, I mean, you're still going to be limited to that 386 motherboard. And uh, But, you know, really what this is kind of is a souped up 386 with 486 code and some onboard L1 cache. Um, now, the 386 chips, none of them had as far as I know, uh, L1 cache on board. Uh, this chip has one kilobyte of L1 cache uh, built into the chip. That's not much, but uh, it should make a difference. Now, there were later uh, versions of this chip made by people like uh, IBM and Texas Instrument, and those had more L1 cache, like eight kilobytes, I believe. Um, there's also slower versions of this chip. There's a 33 megahertz version that is uh, quite a bit more common than this 40 uh, megahertz chip. Now this chip should be compatible with most uh, 386 motherboards. Um, the, for the L1 cache, you do it doesn't really aut automatically activate. Uh, you either have to use software to activate it, or some motherboards have it built into BIOS where you can activate or enable uh, internal cache. The motherboard in this machine does indeed have a, a later BIOS that allows you to enable the L1 cache uh, via the BIOS, but uh, some 386 motherboards, maybe probably the majority of them, do not have that option and you have to use software. Um, I mean, other than upgrading, if you know, if it, it was probably better bet just to upgrade and get a 46, but you gotta understand the 46 were pretty expensive at first. Um, so a lot of people did have their old 386 machine, they just kind of wanted to upgrade it. They didn't want to spend a ton of money. This was kind of a good alternative. Um, really the only real benefit of this thing is is you can, in the early days, um, you know, you could kind of get a math coprocessor cheaper this way, I guess. Um, now early, well, 486 uh, processors, they came in DX and SX variants. Um, now with the 386, that meant a different thing. For 386s, um, an SX processor was, I believe, 16-bit, where if you had a DX386, that was a full 32 bits. Um, that changed when we got to 46. When we got to 46, they changed that. And instead, what it meant is if you had an SX 46 processor, that meant there was no math coprocessor on board. If you had a DX, you did have a math coprocessor on board. Um, now, no 386s had math coprocessors, including the, this DLC. Uh, those were always an optional uh, socket on your motherboard where you had to add one. Um, now, there are some 486 motherboards that have a 487 uh, coprocessor socket. It's, it was very kind of questionable practice. There really was never a true 487 uh, coprocessor. For those, they did make a 487, but really what they were, they were just full-blown uh, 
DX486 processors and you put them in and really what it did it just deactivated your SX processor and it took complete control. They were very expensive um, so it was kind of <laughs> I don't know if that would be shady or whatnot, but um, if you had a 386 processor, you could actually you could get one of these. So it's kind of like upgrading to a 46, and then you could still use a cheaper 387 Mathco processor. So I guess that was kind of a benefit of one of these things. But anyways, I just want to run some tests. I want to see how much of a performance boost this will really get me over the AMD um, 40 megahertz 386. So first, I'm just going to run this just with this chip um, without the L1 cache enabled and then I'm gonna run the te benchmarks again with it enabled so we'll see uh, we'll see the difference there so here's the inside of that machine now I haven't been able to identify this motherboard um, but I can tell you it, it does use the Opti uh, 495 XLC chipset uh, I have 8 megabytes of RAM um, there's if you can see it there's an unpopulated uh, co-processor socket back there and there is our AMD uh, 40 megahertz 386 chips sorry for the there it is uh, yep so that's what we'll be put replacing with the 46 the DLC uh, this board only has 128 uh, of L2 cache it can't do 256, it's just 64 or 128. So for video in this thing, I'm using a ET4000 uh, ISA video card. And for sound, I'm just using a good old Sound Blaster 2.0. Although, for the benchmarks, there won't be any sound, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. But, you know, for completion's sake. Alright, let the face-off begin. So here we have the option in the BIOS to enable or disable the internal cache. Now as I find out in a minute here, apparently this uh, has no effect on my CPU. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, but it it just doesn't work. Um, I have to use a software solution. Now while this is loading up here, uh, as you can see at the top where it says uh, processor, it says the CX486 DLC. Now on a lot of boards uh, that the BIOS doesn't recognize the chip properly, it will come up as a 46SX. So if it actually recognizes it, that's a, that's a good sign. So here I'm going into uh, Benchmark to test it, and it will say the L1 cache is still enabled, even though I disabled it in BIOS. So uh, there's that. I, I should also point out really quick here that uh, the, there are much faster later DLC chips. Uh, IBM even made one that's clock tripled. Uh, at 100 megahertz, which is essentially a, a 386 running at about 100 megahertz, uh, about equal to a 66 megahertz 46. What you just saw right there, that was some software to uh, actually disable the L1 cache, uh, which I, it did successfully, thankfully. There we go. All right, so let's start with the benchmarks here. We're going to start with 3D Bench, and yes, I know I spelled Cyrix wrong in the upper right-hand corner. Um, so anyways, yeah, uh, we see a five point difference between the 386-40 and the DLC-40. Um, the one with the L1 cache disabled falls somewhere in the middle, so that's a five point difference there, which is quite noticeable. Okay, so the next benchmark we went straight into there is PCP Bench or PC Bench, a uh, pretty common benchmark. Uh, yeah, you can see the, the 386 at 40 megahertz. It's almost like a slideshow, whereas the 40 megahertz DLC, I wouldn't say it's smooth, uh, but it's a lot smoother uh, than just the 386-40. There was the uh, scores up there. Uh, just a couple point difference, but I mean, just looking at it, you can immediately tell the difference, uh, especially between the uh, 386-40 and the DLC-40. All right, and the final benchmark here, of course, is Doom. Uh, you know, to give us a better idea of uh, gameplay, and you can see right away the uh, Cyrix DLC at 40 megahertz is pulling ahead, uh, especially of that uh, AMD 386 at 40 megahertz. Now, I mean, uh, the the Cyrix DLC, it's not it's not exactly the CPU I'd want to game with, uh, especially with 
something like Doom, um, I would really prefer something like a, a 66 megahertz 46, or actually even something a little bit faster for higher resolutions. But I mean, back in the day, if all you had was a 3D6, uh, even a 40 megahertz 3D6, and you drop this 40 megahertz DLC in, I I could see how it could could make a difference with playing games like Doom. Um, I, I mean, I still wouldn't recommend playing like full screen in the highest detail settings and stuff, but I mean, I could see if you were playing at the same settings as you did on a, on your 386, you'd get a real performance boost there. So, I mean, it, it definitely did do something. Um, it makes me wonder how much of a difference like the later ones uh, did, even at the same 40 megahertz speed, just like the Texas Instruments chips that had you know way more L1 cache. I wonder. It makes me wonder what kind of difference uh, they made in performance, which. Maybe that's a future video. Um, I'm not gonna make you watch this whole thing here. We're gonna we're gonna skip to the end of this. Okay, so here we are. Uh, the benchmarks wrapping up, and you could see right away the DLC with the uh, L1 cache enabled pulled way ahead. There's the numbers. Uh, not a huge difference between the 38640 and the DLC 40 with the L1 cache disabled. Just 0.6 frames per second difference, but um, you could see there's uh, a couple frames per second difference uh, with the full DLC with the L1 cache uh, enabled. So that L1 cache does make quite a difference in Doom. Um, I should also say these are with. I'll state it again later, but these are with you know kind of standard memory timing settings and stuff. I um, after these tests, I did tweak my system a little bit with the uh, memory timing settings, and the best I was able to get uh, with the DLC chip is 10 frames per second. Of course, that's with this benchmark with uh, you know the highest detail and, and and the full viewing settings. But uh, but then again, there's no sound being processed either. So. Um, but then again, not not too bad. Definitely, definitely a difference between the uh, the DLC uh, and with the uh, 386, especially with the uh, the L1 cache enabled. So after the tests and playing around on it, the question is. Uh, was the Cyrix 46 DLC worth it to upgrade, especially if you had something like this with the uh, 386 DX40? Uh, well, uh, like a lot of times the answer is it depends. Um, uh, it was definitely faster than the 480 or the 386. So the DLC uh, 40 megahertz was definitely faster than the 386 uh, 40 megahertz, um, but. It actually wasn't as huge as I thought it would be. I, I thought it would be a little bit more. Um, it was noticeable, uh, especially something like Doom was noticeably faster on the DLC chip uh, than on the, the 386, the AMD 386. So if you're playing something like Doom, I think it gave me about like three frames per second higher. Um, I mean, that can make a difference for a, a shooter, a first person shooter like that. And you, it would probably even let you play it in a little bit bigger screen, um, you know, just as well as you're playing it in a smaller screen with 386. Uh, personally, I, at the time, I probably would have just saved up for a, a true uh, 486, but it's not a bad upgrade, especially, uh, you know, if you, if you tinker with settings a little bit. I ran all these benchmarks at kind of like a standard safe uh, speed. Um, you know, I was running with one wait state uh, for my memory timings. I think I was running with a memory timing of 2111, which, it, you know, that's not bad at all. That's the best this machine can do, actually. But um, I was running with an AT bus divider of 5. Just, you know, kind of, I didn't really mess with the bio settings. I, I played it safe. Um, I did push the machine a little bit after that, which I didn't record footage of, um, but I took my weight states down to zero, um, I put the AT bus divider down to three, which I think is the lowest it can get, and I couldn't get memory timings uh, slower than 2111, and I did get uh, a pretty good boost, um, but again, you could say you could do that with the AMD 38640 and you could still get a little boost, but uh, with, all the, with all the things, you know, with all the settings and stuff uh, maxed like that with the DLC chip, I did get results that were a couple things. A PCP and 3D Bench actually beat a uh, similarly spec 33 megahertz True 486, uh, an old Packard Bell I used to have, which had the same uh, amount of L2 cache 
and it was running a true 33 megahertz 46 and I actually beat it in those two tests and I got pretty close uh, to it in the Doom uh, benchmark too. So uh, on a well optimized system with a DLC uh, 46 you can probably get close to 33 megahertz 486 speeds. Um, but it, it is not going to be as fast as a true 40 megahertz uh, 486. Now remember your results may vary depending on your motherboard and video cards and whatnot. Um, although the ET4000 I have in there is a pretty good uh, video card for the time, possibly the best for the 386 era. Um, so you know, I mean, like I said, I would have saved up for a 46 at the time, but you know, budgets. Um, it, it does give a noticeable improvement. Not sh ground shattering huge, but it is noticeable. Uh, so, yeah, that's my uh, assessment of the uh, Cyrix DLC, uh, 46 DLC, 40 megahertz chip. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.